I was going to say, and now for something completely different, but um, we're coming from a grassroots level from the other end to what Victoria and everyone said. So we're striving towards inclusion with the Festival of Archaeology and we're on a learning curve and we collaborate as much as we possibly can because we are not dictatorial. So the purpose of the CBA, our vision is here to enable anyone to have skills and opportunity to tell the stories of the people and places that connect us to our world, that help us understand it and make it a better, more inclusive place. That took a long time for us to condense down what all the staff wanted to say, but that's what, who we are and what our vision is. So the CBA is a really small team. We don't have a huge corporate backing and we have five key areas. We're a membership charity. Um, we have events and the Festival of Archaeology comes under events and also our lecture series and various other events. We have youth engagement, which is youth council, YAC, so my YAC colleagues are here, that's the Young Archaeology Club. We have casework and advocacy, we're part of the Joint Amenities Society and we also have publications and if you come to our stand there's some free giveaways there, just do the plug for us. Um, and when we come to the festival, we have some key core funders um, who, and, but we also have collaborators who give us um, funding in kind is the way, a goodwill funding. Um, so the core funding is provided by Historic England and we've got additional funding by CADU. We have additional grants for um, specific areas um, and also we have sponsorship opportunities. So sometimes publishing houses or small um, community groups might do some um, sponsorship. And we have in-kind support and partnership, in particular the National Trust. So where our opening event is going to be at, at their properties and we work with their team um, there as well. Um, they're not our exclusive collaboration last year we had um, Victoria County history team for their app and we did resources and everything that for our young archaeologists on the on the app there so the hist our background for the history started in 1991 um, with a day um, and you can see how it's progressed through there um, in COVID, the small team reacted really, really well. Everything went online and then we moved. I've been in position two years now and we've moved to hybrid. And in 2021, it was the 30, 30 year after 30 years celebration. So what do we do? We have a model, we've got a central event listening, so we facilitate, we have our own um, events uh, over the fortnight, but we have um, a, a website where organisers put on their event, they can load the public and organisers can look regionally at where events are. We have a process, we do online and in person. So for example, we're hosting the National Trust for their um, an evening with National Trust. We do lectures um, and we also, I've highlighted the advice and guidance in the clinics because that's the main focus of today. So our clinics, I have those every two weeks at lunchtime and at night and we have people who come in and go, I want to do an event, I want to rule the world, I want to do a tour of the whole of London and you go hang on a minute um, you've only got an hour and um, in particular this week we had somebody who wanted to do a tour and they wanted to make it as inclusive as possible but they hadn't thought of curb heights and things things like that so we were able to narrow it down to um, show our guidance and we provide event insurance through Towergate but we do not insure weapons and food <laughs> there are only stipulation <laughs> um, I don't know if that's because there was a weaponry of <laughs> instance but, um, <laughs> that prompted that and we provide um, event promotion as well through all our social media and um, on our website and um, we have an evaluation process which I'll, I'll come to and that is as um, as easy as possible if you were an organizer who just wanted to show someone your street and the heritage of your street we've aimed our um, all of our outputs at, um, 
I, I'm going to say, well, Phil knows. There's a man called Phil who lives near me. And if Phil can understand our guidance, we know that we're okay. Because last year I did the clinics and Phil came to every single one. And um, it, was, it was really good, actually. And I said, Phil, can I use your name? Can I send? He said, yes, absolutely. He's gone from being somebody who just organized um, a street tour. And now he's putting on nearly 10 events this year. So with a, with a team of people, because we've um, enabled him to be able to look at the IT, to look at all the assessments that he has to do. So that's what we've tried to do. So the way that we communicate about the festival is we have a two weekly newsletter which is really quite short about things that people need to do and um, we promote via British Archaeology magazine and BBC History on podcasts. Um, we do Spotify, Google ads, um, Obviously, ongoing social media using hashtag Festival of Archaeology and um, paid ads and um, via our partners and supporters. And also, we've got various outputs. We've got our own YouTube channel, and um, we try to make that as accessible as possible. We've had problems where we've done Zoom, and anyone knows the, um, the captions can be quite interesting. But we've um, taken advice, and people who use Zoom can, put, um, sorry, can use the YouTube. There's a facility to for the captions to be on there um, without us telling you um, quite interesting things, which <laughs> uh, translation, especially with regional dialect, dialect. And we've also got a resources page. Um, so as well as our events, um, people can put on resources like guided walks, or some people have got how to, for, for instance, the Young Archaeologists Club, how to mummify an orange, that kind of thing. And they're available year round. And so you can see our digital reach. We had somebody um, last year who said, well, you know, I've got 2,000 followers. Is it worth putting it on your social media? And we were able to say, well, we've got 84 million um, So um, the reach was quite um, sub more substantial. Um, who are our organisers? Well, there's Phil, people like Phil, um, who um, have no idea about risk assessment, safeguarding. They just want to put something on, a real grassroots thing who we have to engage. Um, groups and societies, some are, um, are really um, up to date with all the procedures and policies. Some just say, oh, we're just going to show them some coins. If they swallow them, oh, that won't be, you know, that kind of thing. So we have to engage with people who are at all different levels bigger heritage organisations, private organisations like Pete, local authority, um, to national trust, and also archaeological units. And that, I've probably missed one, but um, that's there. So these are the sort of things that we've been um, a part of our out, outputs. So um, we have... Um, tea out guides about inclusivity and that's available in sway and in accessible pdfs um, and they did participant in interviews with people who were festival organizers and they give um, advice and guidance and they enable but they don't enforce like I said we're not a dictatorial um, organization but there are certain things that you have to do before you become an event organizer like how you use our safeguarding policy for example you have to agree that you will be safe and do a risk assessment um, and we wanted to maximize the potential so through these case studies um, there's various top tips and videos about how to put on an event um, and I I'd highly recommend because um, even though we're used to doing um, organising events, there are some things in there that you just didn't think of. And it's like many of the speakers today, we've been writing notes about them. The other... Um Thing is the other tea out guide sorry um you know why should we be inclusive there's explanations on why um the different terminology that people use um you know it engages a whole new audience as well um what what should we consider and how to sustain that relationship afterwards at the cba if we did not sustain our relationships we wouldn't have the feedback that we have about when we've gone right and when we've got wrong and it's those relationships that help us work a lot better Better. So these are the guides that we created last year in partnership with Abby and Sarah at the Enable Archaeology 
Archaeology Foundation. I was temporary treasurer for a year, and um, I I come from a grassroots background, and I don't want to be reading mega lists of how to do things. I wanted an organiser to be able to look at these and just think, have I thought of this? Have I thought if I'm doing a walking guide, are there any toilets nearby? Can people come out? Am I walking ahead and talking and nobody can hear me from behind? Just just minor. And so they're just small little sentences with the questions to ask myself. You are not going to answer all those questions, but they are prompts. So the idea is to be as transparent as possible. And on our festival um, uh, when you put an event on, we ask that you are as transparent as possible. If you are walking up Glastonbury Tour, then say there is not a way for you to get up Glastonbury Tour if you are um, you have difficulty in walking up Glastonbury Tour. Just say it, and if people know that they can't do it, then they won't. They don't need to come. But you have to be transparent. You try and make things as accessible and inclusive as possible but nobody wants to turn up to an event and know that they haven't been catered for the other thing is don't other people when they walk in the door so you don't say to them oh we've got a special toilet over here for you and make people stand out everything has to be as if they were a guest or we take it quite personally a guest in your room and it's obvious where things are and that you are open and personable to ask if not this is what our recent um, model guide that is going to go up shortly with Amphora, um, the mental health and well-being. We've done a before the activity, what to think about, during the activity and after the activity. Again, it's about sustaining relationships. Again, it is not 50 pages about this. It's a one-page document. And then if people want to research it further, there's all the links with Amphora, to Amphora and the, Q, the QR code that everybody uses. I just wanted to say, I've said before that we're a small organisation, so we the capacity is quite challenging. Sometimes we work really hard, but also we're a small organisation. And if somebody tells us that we haven't included anything, sometimes by that afternoon, we change it. So Charlotte emailed and said, um, I've been looking at your guides, which I just showed you before. I believe you've missed something off. And I said, oh, no, it's so obvious. We've missed it off. And so we changed it, uploaded it, went back to her and said, um, we've changed it. And um, so she was very appreciative um, about that. So I just put that up there. So there's always a lot about what people are doing wrong, but we're really trying to do things right. And the only way we can do that, because we don't live that life, is by people telling us. We won't be able to cover every single opportunity, but if people are transparent and tell us, then we can, we can deal with it. So these are our challenges. As I've said, organisers are not all experienced. We do require some advanced information. Um, I, I know that people here have said before, and Sarah said before, that people don't feel comfortable. But we have been at an event, and it's been amazing. And then afterwards, the evaluation says that my disability was not, we, you didn't care, care for my disability. Um, We've been at the event and there's only been 10 people. How could, how could that be? And so we've sent messages out saying you can tell us anonymously, but how can we make this better and nobody has come back? Also, advanced information, Young Archaeology Club. Parents do not tell us of any challenges that their children have had. We've, I've been a, a, a Young Archaeology Club leader. Um, a young man told me that he had um, severe, a severe problem, um, epilepsy, and I went to the parent and said, "This, your son has epilepsy, we should know. It's all right, he'll take himself off if he feels one coming on. And that's really not how we want to operate. And we have, you know, yaks throughout the whole and they the parents seem to think that these children will not be included and it's not the case what it means is we can get people in who are specialists or our yak leaders that are trained and we can be made, made aware of it and we we can include anyone as long as we know because we do not want an incident um we also um i think pete said about his evaluation you know two people wouldn't go um 
that's quite challenging sometimes because you just don't understand. But also, um, we have to realise that, that we have organisers and people who are sending back the evaluation might be about that particular event, which we have no control over. So this is the breakdown, really, from our evaluations. We have 439 events last year, 794 sessions. So somebody might give the same talk three times. That's what expands that out. And um, we have 202 of those resources and um, 233 different organisers. Um, when we look at those reporting a disability, it's increasing year on year. Um, we're better than national average, and that is a combination of the organisers and the participants. Um, we have a really detailed about, breakdown of who our organisers and participants are in a theory of change. Um, again, this is the one that I wanted to show you here. Over two thirds had access issues. At the events that we ran as the CBA, we didn't have anybody tell us. We had um, thousands at Corfe Castle, for example. Um, the bookings, people didn't read their spam, for example, and also um, online bookings that other organisers had done, like individuals. Those were some of the problems. Um, so we can't always control it, but if we have the feedback, we can try. So um, at these clinics, we've set, now set out every two weeks a specific thing we'll talk about. So if people want help with bookings, we'll guide them through bookings. Um, but there's only so much pastoral care we can, we can give. So this year, now I was listening to Pete's stand-up comedian. We were all writing down a stand-up comedian that you had for your one of yours. It's about archaeology and creativity. And um, boy, have we got some fantastic things planet planned. So you need to keep an eye out. It's the last two weeks of July. Our opening is at Powys Castle. Our closing is at Greenwich. We've got a youth weekend. We have lectures. We have a theme day. Um, we've I could, I could go on and on, but we won't. So um, if you'd like to find out more about the festival or if you feel you'd, there's things that you think we could change or perhaps bring into the festival on the guidance, please let us know. And um, a big thank you because we are a small team and the team is what makes... I might be the coordinator, but there's a huge body of experience and people behind me who, um, when I'm going, it's just not working, and they go, yes, it is, and push you forward. So a big thank you to the whole CBA team.